Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! Yes, in every generation on the earth, God sends special messengers with unique messages to fulfill his word in their dispensation. Whether through the Emancipator, church services, special conferences like the New Christian Conference or the Good Life Devotion, carefully listen, watch and read the message of life and of the divinity of the church ministered by Dr. David Bindan as ordained by God in the scriptures to mature the body of Christ into the full measure of the stature of Christ. Dr. David Bindan, taking us on our journey in Christ into sinlessness, sicklessness, deathlessness, lacklessness, and leaving us manifested sons of God to the glory of our Father. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindan on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the divine life experience of sinless holiness, incorruptible health, deathlessness, and reigning in life as a son of God in the full measure of the stature of Christ. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you doing? I believe you are basking in the glory of the Lord Jesus as we are. Good. On this note, I want to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. If you are new, the Good Life Devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word brought to the whole world on various platforms of media to do so much in our lives. Outstanding amongst them is to take you from the frustrations and the um, troubles and uh, I mean the anxiety of ordinary human living into that blessed blissful place of exemption for sons and daughters of God in Christ. Let's see life like that here on the earth. Number two, the teachings are a bit deep and mature teachings that are brought to you to mature you from wherever you are to your next higher level of maturity in Christ, so that together as a body of Christ will come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And number three, it is to make you much more effective in the work of the ministry, so that in whichever local assembly of the body of Christ you are in, we can together be effective enough to bring many more humans into God's glorious plan for their lives in Christ. So we keep on telling you the teachings are the communication is a bit different from what you usually know. And they're intentional because they're to stir you up and push you from the masses into those who are going further with the things of God. We have been looking at the subject of you can change anything. For a good number of people, Either they were born into undesirable situations and they just accepted them like that. Or while on the journey of their life on the earth, they found themselves in certain situations which are undesirable. And in order to make do with life, they have decided to accept them like that. In fact, a lot of the philosophies of men came as a result of showing men how to make do, how to manage the life they have come to meet. But that is not what Jesus brought. Jesus is the solution. When you know him and you know truth, he shows you how to tame undesirable and conditions that are inconsistent with his will for you. 
So we're looking at the, the topic that you can change any circumstance. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what is the state of your health. I don't know what is the state of your finances. I don't know what is the state of your marriage, the state of your education, your company. But whatever is inconsistent with God's will for your life, I'm telling you the truth. You can change it. And that is what the Lord is bringing your way this week. Don't say, oh, no, no, I don't think this thing can change. If you say that you block yourself from the ability, but if the teachings appear a bit deeper for you, what do you say? Say, so, whoa, I've never seen it in this way. So talk to the Holy Spirit. Go back again, watch the message. Allow him to let the truth dawn on you. You see, when something is what you are hearing for the first time or the first few times, you need to hear it over and again until your system is realigned to receive it. So when you watch the Glory Devotion on TV, that's not it. And go to YouTube again and watch it. Download the messages. Create your own place. Watch them over and again. It's very like messages of this week. Because something may show up tomorrow that is undesirable because of the fractured world that many are conscious of. So whether it is today or tomorrow, you should be in a state that you can change any circumstance, any situation. So in our previous episode, we started by looking at the first topic, which is the fact that things change when you change. In other words, if you want to change any situation, if you want to experience a changed person in another person, if you want to change any condition of anything around you, you must be the first to change. I believe that this week, if a lot of husbands and wives watch carefully, you will change your homes. Of course, I'll come there in the week when we take a look at specifically homes, health, resources, and money, and all that. How you can change these one by one. But we are building a foundation for all now. So today we are going to move forward. And our topic today, as we have in the Manspeter, if you have not started using the Manspeter, I inspire you to start using it. It's the daily devotional for the now, and it comes in monthly models. And you can call us and place orders for your monthly copies or go to our website and download free copies in English or in French. Today we are looking at the this, this subtopic, how your change changes things. <laughs> Remember in our first topic, it was when you change, things change. Now today we are going to take you to the molecular level. Are you getting it? And on the global devotions, we take you in the word of God into deeper dimensions of what is not obvious. How does your change change things. How does my change change my financial situation? How does it change my health situation? How does it change things around me? We're going to look at that in the scriptures. Shall we then pray now that the truth that is coming will have free access into our spirits, our souls, and our bodies and produce amazing results in Jesus' name, shall we pray. Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity we have to share in fellowship. I bless you for streaming for these realities to the world at this point in time. And right now, I release these living substances into the hearts, the minds, the bodies of them that are connected and will connect and say, receive that transformation in the name of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So our main scripture, as we take a look at how your change changes things. Matthew chapter 14 verse 30 is our main scripture. But I think I should take it a little bit um, further from there. Let's take a look at it. Matthew chapter 14. Um, you can take the whole story from verse 20. You know, it's about when Jesus had finished feeding them and then um, he despised the people and then the disciples took a boat to, uh, to go to the other side and in the middle of the night they, they were in trouble because of the waves and they saw Jesus walking to them. So I'm going to start from there. It says that, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. I love Jesus. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. You know, sometimes when we are teaching people to understand what the Bible is, because some people 
like to say, oh, it's not everything in the Bible that is uh, uh, God's word. And they try to, as if they are punching holes in the Bible, <laughs> you can't do that. The truth is that the, Bible, the whole Bible is a message from God. But that message is communicated through what he has said directly. It's communicated through the culture of people that he has written about. It is communicated through even what Satan has said. It is communicated through what people have said. So it's not everything in the Bible that is the direct communication of truth from God. But everything in the Bible has been permitted to be there so that you can learn something that can enhance your knowledge of God. So for instance, the disciples said, it's their spirit. But when Jesus came in verse 27, he said that, But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So the disciples said, it's the spirit. Jesus said, no, it is I. So if you see the statement, it's the spirit. It's in the Bible. But it wasn't God telling you that it was a ghost. But what does that teach you? It tells you the belief systems of the apostles around that time. And that can help you in understanding them and their religion with God and their theology if you go into deeper things with God. Anyway, that was just for somebody. Let's continue. Verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Verse 29, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. I love Peter. <laughs> Woo! He had an experience that Matthew never had, John never had. He walked on the water. You may say he doubted, fine, but at least he walked on water. Let's go. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? This thing so much illustrates the principle we started with yesterday. That what you deeply contemplate about somebody, about a situation, or about a thing is the way you experience it. I want to just read what we have in the Mass Peter here so that you can follow carefully. We said here that when Jesus said to Peter, come, Peter began to walk on water, didn't he? He did. It was still the same Peter that woke up in the morning of that day. He hadn't changed. He hadn't died and resurrected. The same Peter. It was still the same sea. It was still the same Jesus. Now let's go. By changing his focus from Jesus to the boisterous winds, Peter began to sink. What happened? If you are looking at Peter, what you have noticed only would have been that over a period, Peter was walking. And then suddenly Peter began to sink. Peter is still the same Peter, Jesus the same Jesus, the sea the same sea. You are going to wonder why did he begin to sink? It was only Jesus who told us what happened. He says, why did you doubt? Now, who can see doubt? You can see doubt. It was something within Peter. So we put it that. Peter changed his internal contemplations and by doing so, he changed his atmosphere. And instantly, the water changed towards him. And he began to sink. <laughs> it was the same water that had an ability to keep it afloat according to the word of Jesus. Jesus had not withdrawn his word. The water was still the same water. Peter was still the same Peter. But when Peter shifted his focus from Jesus and put his focus on the boisterous winds, he began to contemplate differently. And what happened? He began to experience a different water. Water started responding to the atmosphere around Peter's heart. I tell you, your room, your computer, your vehicle, your chair, your clothes, your wife, your pets, everything around you respond to the atmosphere around your heart. Many don't know this. Your internal contemplations discharge certain frequencies to things around you. 
So there are people that say, so oh, anything I handle doesn't work. I do business doesn't work. I do this doesn't work. It's the atmosphere they have inside. And they'll keep on blaming people for cursing them, for bewitching them, until they are taught the truth to change their internal environment. Nothing will work in their lives. Why? They have an environment of nothing works towards anything. Someone says, oh, I've been in five marriages. Anyone that marries me doesn't work. And they begin to count who has bewitched them. It's not about a witch. It's about your internal contemplations. If you catch these things this week, oh my God, your life will change forever. Oh, praise God. Now, in this teaching, the, the actual goal is to show you the mechanism of how your change changes things. Now, we just saw Peter. When Peter changed his contemplations from Jesus to the boisterous winds, he changed something within himself and he changed the water around him and he began to sink. How did that happen? I'm going to go in a short but when I come. I will show you about four or five stages of this behind the scenes mechanism. And when you catch it, glory to God, you will change anything in your life. Are you excited? Don't go, I'll be right back after this break. world whatever does not get challenged does not change any state will continue to be that same state until it is challenged adam brought death and jesus dissolved death but death continues to behave as if it is king and that will continue until some people challenge it according to the scriptures god himself has determined that there will come a time that he will raise a people that will dissolve death on this earth we have over D-E-A-T-H Get ready for the New Creation Conference 2024 with Dr. David Bindan on the 14th and 15th of November 2024 Theme Deathlessness Venue Accra International Conference Center Accra, Ghana Time 5.30pm each evening New Creation Conference Helping you exhibit the divine life Praise God. Wow. So let's take it one by one. Praise God. All right. We said that first of all, when you change your internal contemplations towards a situation, what happens is that your perception of its effect changes. That's the first thing. The way you perceive the thing changes. When you change your internal contemplation about it. I'll give you the example in Numbers chapter 13 verse 33. The Israelites knew that there were people on the promised land. And they had been told by God that they were going there to displace them. So they were not ignorant of the fact that there were people on the land. And they were sent to go and see the land to prove whether the land was the way it was. Not to prove whether there were people on it or not. So they went with energy and zeal. We are going to spy the land. <laughs> we are ready to cross over. Okay. Then they went. And they saw one man. They looked at the height of the man. <laughs> they began to feel that they are grasshopper. They saw another one. All of them were like that. Then instantly... The people who came with zeal and vim and all that, <laughs> their internal contemplation started changing. Not long, they began to feel differently towards the annex or the land. Even though the land was still flowing with milk and honey, they even brought fruit from that land. The land hadn't changed. But their perception of whether or not they can take the land changed. Why? By what they saw, they changed their internal contemplation so it changed their perception so the first thing that happens is that when you change your internal contemplations it changes your perception towards the thing about which you change your contemplations i'll give you an example something may be very dangerous it may be very fearful may be very harmful and all that 
But if you through the word of God are able to change your internal contemplations towards it, Suddenly, you don't perceive it as dangerous, as harmful, as terrible as other people perceive it. The first thing that changes when you change what you think within you about a situation is the way you perceive it. Give you an example of the COVID. Yes, scientifically, COVID was dangerous, deadly, and all that. When we heard from God that the answer was in the church and discovered who we are in Christ, through the word of God, I taught our brethren then. Many of them were frontliners in many places. They knew all over. Their understanding of the situation changed. Their internal contemplation changed. So COVID was not as deadly, as harmful as it was to other people. And many of them are still here today. That disease that is in your body that you think is going to kill you. It will kill you depending on your contemplation concerning it. It can kill you depending on your contemplation concerning it. Are you following this? So the first thing that happens is when you change your internal thinking about a matter, you change the way you perceive it. I'll give you the example of a husband and wife. I'll be talking a lot along this line, especially when we come there. You say your husband is, uh, he talks anyhow to you, okay? All right. The moment you go through the word of God and discover who he is in Christ and you start changing your contemplations about him along with God's word, what happens is that the way you perceive him changes. Even though he may still be talking the same way, but your perception of him changes. And that's the first miracle. That's the beginning point of how you change it. So how does it work? How does your change change things around you? Number one, when you change your internal contemplations, you change your perception towards it. Is it a person? Is it a situation? Is it an object? When you change your, the way you think about it, you also change the way you perceive towards it. That's number one. That takes us to number two. We said, secondly, with your new perception, you are able to respond positively to it or to the person or to the situation in power, in love, and with a sound mind instead of with timidity. Remember the Bible says it? It says, we have not received the spirit of timidity, the spirit of fear, but of love, power and a sound mind. So imagine that you are in a very terrible economic state and you are living in fear of never ever being able to make ends meet and now you go through the word of God as I is taking you through this week and then you begin to renew your internal thinking around it. The first thing that will happen is you begin to perceive differently towards it and by the different perception you'll be in the right state of mind to begin to respond positively towards the situation. That is the second stage of the miracle. So, change of your internal conditions produces a change of your perception towards the thing. And then, a change of your perception produces a change of response towards the thing. From a negative response to a positive response. If you respond negatively to your country, you will suffer in that country. If you respond negatively to your husband, you will suffer in that marriage. Or your wife, you will suffer in that marriage. If you respond negatively to the school you are in, you will come out with terrible grades. If you respond negatively to your car, it will give you trouble. You see, anything in life, your response is determined by your perception. Determined by what you deeply contemplate about it. So, change your contemplation, you change your perception. Change your perception, you change your response. And then what's the next stage? We said here that thirdly, your positive response results in the creation of a positive atmosphere around you towards the thing. Oh, glory to God. How I wish people can catch this. Time is catching me, but I need to explain this. You see, the moment you perceive differently about a person, and you begin to respond positively, it creates first a positive atmosphere around you. All, all these three stages are all around you. So imagine the husband that used not to talk well to the wife. The wife has through the scriptures renewed her thinking about him. The wife is beginning to perceive him differently. Now the wife is beginning to respond differently. And the wife has now begun to um, create a positive atmosphere around herself concerning him. 
That's what it is. You can take it to finance. It can take it to sickness. It can take it to any circumstance. If you change your internal contemplations, you change your perception. If you change your perception, you change your response. If you change your response, you create a positive atmosphere. That leads us to the uh, fourth stage. Fourth stage, as you relate to the situation in this transformed atmosphere for a period of time, the situation begins to respond positively towards you. Glory to God. And this is when you realize that, hey, at least with the final stage, the thing also changes towards you. Because the atmosphere around you produces a response from the thing you are dealing with. And the thing now responds to it. So sicknesses respond to the atmosphere around you. Husband or wife, they respond to the atmosphere around their spouses. Children respond to your atmosphere around you. Your work responds to the atmosphere around you. Your country, anywhere you are, things respond to the atmosphere around you. How do you create that atmosphere? Change your internal contemplations towards it. You will change your perception towards it. You will change your response towards it. You will change your atmosphere towards it. And the thing will respond to you according to your atmosphere. So we had the ability to hide COVID patients and the disease disappeared. What happened? We had an atmosphere of dominion. And the COVID particle had to respond that way. It is the same thing to every disease. Same thing to every situation. It doesn't matter what people consider terrible. Your response towards it, the atmosphere you carry about it, is the way it responds to you. May this lesson sink deep into you. May this truth become a, a, a base in you. I pray for you that you have the wisdom to go back and listen and watch this and make notes and think on this until these principles catch up with your heart. Oh, time has caught us up. Pray. Pray that with what you have learned, you will sit down and digest these things and begin to apply them to change any circumstance in your life. Father, I bless you. I hereby pour forth torrents of grace and light and ability into the lives of all that I have watched and are reading and are hearing and shall in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you watching us? There is a blissful life on this earth. It's a life in Christ, a life in the kingdom of God. How do you have access to it? It's already available in Christ. All you need is to get into Christ. How do you get into Christ? Believe that Jesus Christ came into this world and died and took away the sin of mankind. And by that death, he resurrected and reconciled mankind and opened the door to the Father. You can come in and receive eternal life. If you want to do that, believe what I've just said and declare with your mouth his lordship by saying this after me. Say with me, Jesus, I declare you Lord of my life. Because I believe that by your death and resurrection, you have made eternal life available. I am born again. Hallelujah. And then it's all your heart. Truly, you are born again. You can contact us and we'll help you with materials that will help you to grow in Christ. Don't forget, we are dealing with the subject, you can change anything. We've dealt with two topics. Things change when you change. Today we dealt with another one. How your change changes things. We're going to look at another one in our next episode. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 53 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy.